So we need to talk about carbon. And of course, carbon fibre is that thing that everyone thinks sounds very sophisticated, very space age, very expensive. But the truth is that it's now finding its way into all sorts of things that we use these days. And I've got all sorts of different types of carbon fibre sheeting that I've, that I've made here. Now, I've added in various other different types of hybrid fabrics, and in particular, a reasonably new sort of material called a negro, which is actually just a very clever woven uh, poly, uh, polypropylene which is actually in all sorts of quite cheap day-to-day -day goods, but it's been um, added into the composites world and, uh, and added in with carbon fibre to give it some really interesting properties. So I've got a whole variety of ones here which we're going to test for behaviour, for strength and for stiffness today. And it will hopefully give you an idea um, of how they compare and about what might be right for your project. So all the way from a type of carbon fibre mat here, which is actually not a woven fabric and it's appeared in the last few years as a cheaper way of making carbon fibre parts. We'll see how that one does. This is a pure uni unidirectional carbon fibre, which is very stiff in one direction and not at all in the other. But again, I'll go into a bit more detail about that. And then two types of Anegra carbon fibre hybrid. This one is just woven 50-50. And then this is, this is called co-mingled, which is when they've woven in the Anegra fibres into the carbon fibre itself. So we'll see how they're done. They've all been made using epoxy resin. Uh, I will do a, another video at some point with regarding how you make uh, composites in the first place. So using, uh, using resins, either epoxy or polyester resin, and then using different types of fabric, which you then allow to cure. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. What I'm going to do first is briefly take you through the four different fabrics. Many of you will be aware that in general, carbon fiber comes as a woven fabric and when laminated with specialist two-part epoxy resins, gives you some of the strongest and lightest structural components on the market. You may also know that carbon does have weaknesses, the key one being brittleness, so it doesn't elongate much before snapping or cracking. In terms of popularity, it's a distant second to much cheaper glass fiber, but you'll still find much more of it around than aramids like Kevlar or exotic fabrics like Vectran and Xylon that could cost 200 pounds per square meter in a typical layup. Let's start with a pure carbon fiber. It lacks the popular weave pattern of a twill. This is unidirectional fabric, meaning all the strands run in one direction. It's held together with a handful of thin cords running at right angles and is more fragile to handle than a normal weave. This means the strength is all in one direction, as we'll see later. The lack of woven ups and downs also means it can make a very thin laminate with some very noticeable consequences that will become apparent. Next is a new sort of carbon. It's not a woven fabric at all, and is instead lots of recycled, shorter cut strands formed into a squishy mat. It's less than half the price of woven carbon and has eco-credentials. We'll see if it's any good, as it's a first try for me. Third, and here we start to actually deal with the real purpose behind this video. We have a carbon with a relative newcomer co-mingled into the woven fibres. The white fibres are Inegra, which is a brand name for strands of polypropylene. This plastic is fairly cheap and used in all sorts of household products, but it's hard to create fibres from. The bonuses are that it stretches a hell of a lot before it snaps, and it's super low in density. This means Inegra claims that adding it to a fabric will mean better impact handling, less brittleness and less weight. You can get it on its own, but it's so floppy that you struggle to get it to hold its shape without support, or a very thick laminate. Here, about 30% of the weave is Anegra. Finally, a hybrid weave that you may be slightly familiar with in that it sort of resembles carbon Kevlar hybrids. This is half-half carbon and Anegra in a plain weave. So I made these laminate sheets using a basic process that I won't show you on here. There are tons of great video tutorials on YouTube for that. We're going to look at a couple of things their stiffness and how they break. What you'll notice in this first bend test is that their thicknesses vary significantly despite containing the same weight of fabric. And this is down to the weave types. Some compress better than others. The carbon mat was a beast and I was somewhat shocked I could only get it down to 3.2 millimeters thick. Apologies for the scrape marks. That was when I tried to be lazy and use a different sort of saw. Anyhow, there's a lot of resin in that sheet and it's simply down to the messed up jumble of short strands in the mat. It's over three times the weight of the others. Right, let's get bending. The fat carbon mat didn't bend much at all, which is unsurprising. What I can tell you though, is that a woven carbon sheet of similar thickness would not bend one tiny bit with these 300 gram weights. The sheet with the most enegra in deflected the most, closely followed by the thinner sheets of unidirectional carbon. 
This is where one key fact of composites, and indeed all material characteristics, jumps out at us. All else being the same, a thicker laminate will be stiffer. We have to remember a lot of this heavy, thick sheet is resin, which adds near as damn it nothing by way of strength. A much cleverer way to get thickness without excess weight is by using a core material, but that's a digression too far for this video. The unidirectional carbon is 0.9 of a millimeter, and so contains nearly the minimum amount of resin possible to wet out the fabric and then cure properly. The other two sat roughly in the middle, as I'd expect typical woven fabrics to behave, at a little below two millimeters. Okay, let's try and break them. I'm not doing an electronically measured tensile strength test here, rather just to give you a sense of how these materials behave. First up, the fat carbon mat. It bends far more than three millimeters of carbon really should, and that's not a compliment, and then it fails entirely. Game over. Next, the commingled carbon with some Enegra mixed in. There's a fair bit of a fight, and it does flex admirably for a near two millimeter thick carbon rich sheet and then it fails. Whilst it doesn't fall in half immediately, the remaining Enegra fibres that survive offer no residual mechanical strength. It can part into two halves with a gentle pull. The Enegra H-hybrid weave ends its battle differently. I can hear the carbon slowly cracking, and indeed the resin too, which flexes less than Enegra. It fails gently, and the 50% Enegra still holds the part together with a little, if not a lot, of strength. It would be very hard to part the two. Finally, the unidirectional. As carbon is famously brittle, and it's so thin, you might expect this sheet to snap like a wafer. Not so. All of the fibres are directly resisting the bending force. I had to try a few tactics here, and in the end simply couldn't snap this pure carbon sheet. I'd have to force it into a very tight radius and use tools to break it. Instead, I decided to show you how weak it is in the perpendicular plane, and then went to snap what remained. Success at last, and as you'd expect, a clean snap, but still after a highly impressive amount of bending resistance. Inegra makes carbon less stiff. You do lose strength, but this is no surprise. This is useful for impact and flex endurance. It's a bit lighter, but only the Inegra component offers this benefit, and it seems to drink more resin. When it fails, it depends on how much Inegra is in there. I didn't find the commingled weave too useful, as the brake isn't going to hold a structure together until a repair can be made. The 50-50 hybrid, however, will give you that post-disaster second chance. The halves won't just rip apart, even if there's a strength compromise, and so it's a useful fabric. Carbon fibre non-woven mat. Seriously, what a pain. It's a nightmare to work with, needs four elephants and a pregnant rhinoceros to apply enough compression to give you an anywhere near consolidated sheet, and it drinks gallons of resin. It doesn't give you the stiffness of woven carbon, and when it snaps, which it does quite easily, that's it. Unless you're attracted by the questionable recycled ego credentials, somewhat nulled by having to use tons of plastic resin, I'd use fiberglass instead. So you've just seen me break a load of pieces of carbon fibre, which has definitely made your day. What you should now do is head over to the other playlists and check out the other sorts of videos that I have on my channel. For those of you interested in my core work on Arctic expeditions, here are my books again. They make you an altogether better and more rounded human being. So go and buy those. For the rest of you, I'll have new content on my lifeboat conversion playlist soon, as well as on this one. I recommend you do sleep and eat a little in the meantime as you await that.